I introduced this example function to you in order to help you think through the two big things that so far we've been doing with stationary points. The two big things are, number one, where are they? You've got to find them. You've got to locate them. Okay? And so you can see, that's what I'm doing up here. What have I done? What's my first step? I, I differentiate because to find stationary points, I'm looking for where that derivative is zero. zero, which is why I've written here, the first derivative is zero when and then I, that's very easy to solve. So you can just state those values, okay? But that's only the first thing. We don't just want to know where they are. We also want to know their nature is the way that we say, right? Determine the nature of these stationary points. I want to know not just that they are there, but what kind of stationary points they are. And so that's why I produced this, right? So what do we call this thing? What is this? It's a table of values. And importantly, it's a table of values for the derivative there, and I check what's happening at each spot and what's happening around each of those important spots. Now this is probably important to mention, I don't think I said it last time, so maybe grab your pen out. This is not just called a table of values, it is also colloquially called a neighborhood test. And the reason why is because the first part where you found the derivative, and you found when it was equal to zero, you know what's happening at these interesting spots. You know that's where the stationary points are. But what you don't know is what's happening around the stationary points. And I was just having this conversation with Eric, actually. What kind of a stationary point it is? Is it a max? Is it a minimum? Is it a, what's that last alternative? A horizontal point of inflection. Which of one of those it is depends on what's happening in the neighborhood. What happened before the stationary point? What happened after? Okay. Now. There's something a little bit dangerous about this table of values. So just put your pens down for a minute and look up at it. What's dangerous is that neighborhood, like when you say, oh, my neighbor, right? What you mean is the house directly next to you, yeah? You wouldn't say, oh, down the street is my neighbor. You'd say that's someone who lives on my street, right? But they're not so close to you. Now, when we had a look at these values, we conveniently found for this particular function, you have negative one and one. So if you went like one unit away, you got this nice series of values. It's like, oh, this is convenient. I know that the function is going to go up. It's going to go across. It's going to go down. It's going to go across. It's going to go up. So there's my shape. I know which one's my maximum. I know which one's my minimum. Okay. The issue here, though, is that I can very easily craft a different function for you where if all you did was say, oh, negative one is an important point, let's just go one unit to the right because zero is convenient. I like zero. I could go one unit to the right and I could actually miss all of this happening. For instance, this curve, it looks like this at the moment. Okay? But it's not that, it doesn't take that much imagination to create a function that doesn't look like this, but maybe looks like this. Now, if it's so narrow, if all the important stuff is happening very close to each other, you can see, if I'm like, ooh, here's an important point. If I go one unit to the right, I've missed everything. I've missed all of this activity that's happening in here. So in fact, the image that I get from this table of values is not very realistic, okay? So therefore, what I want you to put next to, you've drawn a lot of tables of values by now, okay? So you can go back to where you wrote this original one in your theory, or you could just go to the nearest one, that, the most recent one that you've written, okay? What I would say is, just be careful. You must choose values carefully. You must choose values that are, here's the technical phrase, close enough. That's not the technical phrase at all. Um, you must choose values that are close enough. And what close enough means, I'm going to put it um, in inverted commas, what close enough means kind of depends on the function, right? In this case, actually, that's totally fine that like going one unit apart um, gives you the perfect picture. And that's why I chose such a simple example. But other times, like I've, I'm not gonna out anyone, but you guys know me well enough that you can work out who I'm talking about. I've taught in schools where if you said one was the stationary point, they won't accept anything less than saying 0 0.9 and 1.1. That's the neighborhood. Do you see, it's, it's closer in. It's like, oh, they're right close to each other. You have to say close enough though, because as you can imagine, like that's a narrow function. I could just make a narrow one, and even that would be still too far away. Does that make sense? So close enough is a very subjective term, and it depends on the function. Does that make sense? You understand? Okay.
Now here's what I want us to do. I actually want us to draw this function. We didn't do it in a nice, uh, like a proper way. We just sort of got a general idea. I want us to draw this. We've got all the features. Um, I haven't got Y values yet, but you can quickly work them out. And we're gonna draw a nice big one because we're going to use this to understand the next idea, which is what my empty heading is about. So draw yourself up a nice fresh set of axes. I've told you what X values the stationary points have, but I haven't told you the Y values. I want you to draw this thing as accurately as you possibly can. Off you go. I'll, um, I'll play catch up so that you can do it at the same time. No, nah, you've already done that. Just, just draw the function. Draw the function. Actually, I think I did draw this, but whatever. Okay, now <clears throat> we're starting to get a bit better at this, but what I'm going to show you, I'm going to walk you through the construction of my graph because there are actually some steps here that I haven't mentioned before that might be handy. Okay? When you draw, we call this curve sketching with calculus, because now that you know calculus, you know like hundreds of times more information about the, the shape of your graph than you did without calculus. So what I've put onto here is the important points that I know. Um, I've got the maximum turning point there that I found before. You can, in fact, even label it as such, max turning point. I've got my minimum down here. And I determined all of their natures earlier on. Now, in order to make sure that my graph shape looks reasonably accurate, um, the most dangerous thing that people do is something like this. Just watch me doing this. Just watch it. They say stationary point, stationary point. Then they've got to go there. They've got to go there. So they draw something like that because they're like, oh, I've got to get to that point. And it's hard to get the shape right. This is all too straight and angular. Okay? A cubic curve like ours doesn't look like this. Okay? So therefore, in order to avoid this, I construct my graph in a very particular order. Here's how I do it. Where I have stationary points, I don't just label it as a point. I draw in a little horizontal line like that. That's my cue to remember, well, if these really are stationary points, then if I draw a tangent, it ought to be horizontal. right? So this avoids me sort of coming down and being too angular as I get close. Okay? Then secondly, I do the parts that are easiest. Okay? So see, this is a minimum. It's going to go up after this, isn't it? Okay? So therefore, I, I start here, and I just go, wee, that's really easy to do. Uh, it doesn't have to be super accurate. I have the right shape. I'm happy with that. Just like on the right-hand side, the left-hand side is also easy, because see, that's a maximum. So before this, it was, it was down here. Right? So therefore, just like before, I'm going to go like that. And I've got nice, neat curves. All that's left is the part in the middle, which is the trickiest part. I've already worked out by looking at my function what my y-intercept will be. Can you see what the y-intercept is? It's 7. So it's right smack bang in the middle there. How convenient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly, if I had a pencil, I'd use a pencil here, draw a nice curve just so it fits there. Okay? Uh, it takes some practice to be able to do that. So go easy on yourself, but use a pencil. Use a pencil. Uh, if it turns out terrible, just rub it out. Give it another go. Once you're done, uh, at the HSC level, you probably should go over the whole thing in pen because it'll be easier to scan. But let's worry about that. Let's cross that bridge when we get there. Okay?